Hi, hello there. Welcome to Switching Concepts. You can connect and configure switches. That's great. But even a network with the newest technology develops its own problem eventually. If you have to troubleshoot your network, you need to know how switches work. This module gives you the fundamentals of switches and switch operations. Luckily, the switch operation is easy to understand. Let's get started. This video lecture is entitled Switching Concepts. At the end of this video lecture, you should be able to explain how layer to switches forward data. This video lecture is divided into two sections. Frame forwarding, which explains how frames are forwarded in a switch network. And the second section talks about switching domains which compares a collision domain to a broadcast domain. Frame forwarding. The concept of switching and forwarding frames is universal in networking and telecommunications. Various types of switches are used in LANs, WANs, and in the public switch telephone network or PSTN. The decision on how a switch forwards traffic is based on the flow of that traffic. So there are two terms associated with frames entering and leaving the interface. Ingress. This is used to describe the port where a frame enters the device or entering the interface. Egress. This is used to describe the port that frames will use when leaving the device. A LAN switch maintains a table that is referenced when forwarding traffic through the switch. The only intelligence of a LAN switch is its ability to use its table to forward traffic. A LAN switch forwards traffic based on the ingress port and the destination MAC address of an Ethernet frame. So with a LAN switch, there is only one master switching table that describes a strict association between the MAC address and the port. Therefore, an Ethernet frame with a given destination address always exists on the same egress port regardless of the ingress port it enters. So take note that an Ethernet frame will never be forwarded out the same port it was on which it was received. For instance, on this animation here, we have a frame destined for EA, okay? And from the destination address, EA is connected to port 4, so it will be sent out on port 4. Likewise, if we have a frame destined for EE, it will be forwarded on port 1 as shown on this MAC address table. And if we have a frame destined for AB, okay, so that would be forwarded to frame 6 out. A switch is made up of integrated circuits and accompanying software that controls the data path through the switch. So switches use destination MAC address to direct network communications through the switch out the appropriate port towards the destination. So for a switch to know which port to use to transmit a frame, it must learn which device exists on each port. So as the switch learns the relationship of ports to devices, it builds a table called MAC address table. Okay. Now this table is stored in a content addressable memory or CAM, which is a special type of memory used in a high speed searching applications. So for this reason, the MAC address table is sometimes called the CAM table. Now, LAN switches determine how to handle incoming data by maintaining the MAC address table. So, a switch populates its MAC address table by recording the source MAC address for each device connected to each port. So, the switch references the information in the MAC address table to send frames distant for a specific device out of the port which has been assigned to that device. Let's talk about the switch learn and forwarding method. 
So the following two-step process is performed on every Ethernet frame that enters the switch. So step one, learn, and step two, forward. Okay, let's first discuss step one, and that examines the source MAC address. So every frame that enters the switch is checked for new information to learn. It does this by examining the source MAC address on the frame and port number where the frame enters the switch. If the source MAC address does not exist in the MAC address table, the MAC address and the incoming port number are added to the table. So it adds the source if not on the table. Okay. Secondly, okay, on step one, if the source MAC address does exist, the switch updates the refresh timer for that entry. So by default, the switch or most Ethernet switches keep an entry in the table for five minutes. So if the source MAC address does exist in the table, but on a different port, the switch treats this as a new entry. The entry is replaced using the same MAC address, but with more current port number. So the second one is forwarding or forward examines destination address or destination MAC address. So if the destination MAC address is a unicast address, the switch will look for a match between the destination MAC address of the frame and an entry in its MAC address table. So if the destination MAC address is in the table, it will forward the frame out of the specified port. Okay. And if the destination MAC address is not in the table, the switch will forward the frame out all its port except the incoming port. This is called an unknown unicast. So if the destination MAC address is a broadcast or a multicast, the frame is also flooded out all ports except the incoming port. Switch forwarding methods. So switches make layer two forwarding decisions very quickly. This is because of software on application specific integrated circuits or A6. A6 reduce the frame handling time within the device and allow the device to manage an increased number of frames without degrading the performance. So layer two switches use one of two methods to switch frames. Okay, so it's either store and forward switching and capture switching. Now for store and forward switching, this method makes a forwarding decision on a frame after it has received the entire frame and check the frame for errors using mathematical error checking mechanism known as the CRC or the cyclic redundancy check. Now, capture switching, this method begins the forwarding process after the destination MAC address of an incoming frame and the egress port has been determined. Now let us focus more on the store and forward switching. So store and forward switching as distinguished from the capture switching has the following two primary characteristics. So first is error checking. So after receiving the entire frame on the ingress port, the switch compares the frame check sequence or FCS value in the last field of the datagram against its own FCS calculations. So the FCS is an error checking process that helps to ensure that the frame is physical or free of physical and data link errors. If the frame is error free, the switch forwards the frame. Otherwise, the frame is dropped or discarded. The next one is buffering or automatic buffering. The ingress port buffering process used by store and forward switches provides the flexibility to support any mix of Ethernet speeds. So for example, handling an incoming frame traveling into a 100 Mbps Ethernet port that must be sent out 1 Gbps interface would require using the store and forward method. 
So with any mismatch in speeds between the ingress and the egress ports, the switch stores the entire frame in a buffer, computes the frame check sequence or FCS, forwards it to the egress port buffer, and then sends it. Okay, so let's focus now on capture switching. So how is it different from store and forward? So the store and forward switching methods drops the frame that do not pass the FCS or the frame check sequence check. Therefore, it does not forward invalid frame. Okay. So by contrast, the capture switching may forward invalid frames because no FCS check is performed. However, the capture switching has the ability to perform rapid frame switching. Okay? So this means that the switch can make forwarding decisions as soon as it has looked up the destination MAC address of the frame in its MAC address table as shown here in the figure. So frames can begin to be forwarded as soon as the destination MAC address is received. Now the switch does not have to wait for the rest of the frame to enter the ingress port before making its forwarding decision. So fragment free switching is a modified form of catro switching in which the switch only starts forwarding the frame after it has read the type field. So fragment free switching provides better error checking than catro switching with practically no increase in latency. Now, the lower latency speed of a catcher switching makes it more appropriate for extremely demanding high-performance computing or HPC applications that require process-to-process -process latency of 10 microseconds or less. The catcher switching method can forward frames with errors. If there is a high error rate in valid frames in the network, capture switching can have a negative impact on the bandwidth, thereby clogging up bandwidth with damaged and invalid frames. Let's talk about switching domains now. In the previous topic, you gained a better understanding of what a switch is and how it operates. This topic discusses how switches work with each other and with other devices to eliminate collision and reduce network congestion. The terms collisions and congestions are used here in the same way that you use them in a street traffic. Okay? So in a legacy hub-based Ethernet segment, network devices competed for a shared medium. The network segments that share the same bandwidth between devices are known as collision domains. When two or more devices within the same collision domain try to communicate at the same time, a collision will occur. Okay? So, if an Ethernet frame port is operating in half duplex, each segment is in its own collision domain. There are no collision domains when switch ports are operating in full duplex. Okay? So, when there is a full duplex on the link, the collision domains are eliminated. So by default, Ethernet switch ports will auto-negotiate full duplex when the adjacent device can also operate in full duplex. So when there is one or more devices in the half duplex, there will not be a collision domain. There will not be a contention for the bandwidth and collisions are now possible. Okay. Now, if the switch port is connected to a device operating in half duplex, such as legacy hub as mentioned earlier, then the switch port will operate in half duplex also. Okay? In that case, okay, the switch port will be part of the collision domain. So as shown in the figure here, full duplex is chosen if both devices have the capability along with their highest common bandwidth. Okay? Now your switch by default is set on auto negotiation. And when you say auto negotiation, the computer and the switch will negotiate, okay, whether to use full duplex on the duplex. Okay. The duplex must be the same and the speed should also be the same. So if the computer is using 100 Mbps, 
your switch will also operate or should also use 100 Mbps. Broadcast domain. This is a collection of interconnected switches forms a single broadcast domain. Only a network layer device such as router can divide layer to broadcast domain. So routers are used to segment broadcast domains but will also segment the collision domain. So when a device sends a layer to broadcast, the destination MAC address in the frame is set to all the binary ones. So the layer to broadcast domain is referred to as the MAC broadcast domain. The MAC broadcast domain consists of all the devices in the LAN that receive broadcast frames from the host. Okay, so too many broadcasts may cause congestion and poor network performance. Increasing the devices at layer 1 or layer 2 will cause the broadcast domain to expand. Okay, so when a switch receives a broadcast frame, it forwards the frame out of its ports, except the ingress port where the broadcast frame was received. Each device connected to the switch receives a copy of the broadcast frame and processes it. Now, broadcasts are sometimes necessary for initially locating other devices and services on the network, but they also reduce network efficiency. So network bandwidth is used to propagate the broadcast traffic. Too many broadcasts and a heavy traffic load on a network can result in congestion, which slows down the network performance. Now, when two switches are connected to each other, the broadcast domain is increased as seen in the second animation here or the second diagram or topology diagram here. Okay, in this case, Broadcast frame is forwarded to all the connected ports on switch 1, switch 1 is connected to switch 2, and the frame is also propagated to all the devices connected to switch 2. Okay, so next is alleviate network congestion. So LAN switches have special characteristics that help them alleviate network congestion. So by default, Interconnected switch ports attempt to establish a link in full duplex, therefore eliminating collision domains. Each full duplex port of the switch provides the full bandwidth to the device or devices that are connected to that port. Full duplex connections have dramatically increased LAN network performance and are required for 1 Gbps Ethernet speeds and higher. Switches interconnected LAN segments. It uses a MAC address table to determine egress ports and can lessen or eliminate collisions entirely. Now, characteristics of a switch that alleviate network congestions includes the following. So first, you've got fast port speeds. This is depending on the model, switches may have up to 100 Gbps port speeds. Ethernet switch port speeds may vary, okay, so depending on the model and purpose. For instance, most access layer switches support 100 Mbps and 1 Gbps port speeds. Distribution layer switches supports 100 Mbps, 1 Gbps, and 10 Gbps port speeds. And the core layer and data center switches may support 100 Gbps, 40 Gbps, and 10 Gbps port speeds. So switches with faster port speeds cost more than the traditional one but can reduce congestion. Okay, so the next one would be fast internal switching. Now this uses fast internal bus or shared memory to improve performance. Switches use fast internal bus or shared memory to provide high performance. Okay, that is for fast internal switching. Now, for large frame buffers, this allows for temporary storage while processing large quantities of frames. Okay, switches use large memory buffers to temporarily store more received frames before having to start dropping them. This enables ingress traffic from faster port, example 1 Gbps, to be forwarded to a lower or slower. 100 Mbps ingress port without losing frames. Okay, that's large buffer frames. 
from a big bandwidth to a small bandwidth. So the next one is high port density. So a high port density switch lowers overall costs because it reduces the number of switches required. For instance, if 96 access ports were required, it would be less expensive to buy two 48 port switches instead of four 24 port switches. So high port density switches also help keep traffic local, so which helps alleviate congestion. Okay, so this provides many ports for devices to be interconnected to LAN with less cost. This also provides for more local traffic with less congestion. Okay, so that's the end of this video lecture. See you on the next video. Have a great day.